Well, welcome once again, everybody, to Cornerstone Faith Community Church and Word for the Week, our online uh, book study series here at the church. My name is Pastor Jeremy Heitkamp. I'm uh, very happy to be with you today as we look at uh, the very last chapter, chapter 13 of uh, the book by Jerry Bridges, uh, The Discipline of Grace. Um, in this particular chapter, uh, Bridges addresses the discipline of adversity, he says. He uh, links this to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 7, uh, where we read, Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as sons. For what son is not disciplined by his father? And I'll start today by uh, saying this. Uh, the topic of adversity, of difficulty, of pain, of trial, is one of those difficulties, uh, one of those disciplines, I guess, um, that so many people struggle with. Um, I would say people sooner fall away from faith in Christ because of adversity that comes their way than any, really any other thing. Yes, there are people who fall away from faith because you know, they, they encounter um, something in God's word that they just feel like they can't accept, they can't grapple with. You know, people fall away from, from Christ for, for, I guess, a lot of reasons. But I would have to say, probably, if we, if we took a, a, a survey, I would suggest that probably the most people fall away from faith because of some situation of adversity that's come their way and they can no longer justify God as being loving in light of what they've experienced. Um, what's interesting about adversity is that Scripture is so abundantly and plainly clear about difficult times, trials. Um, Paul says, I think, I think the number is 15 times in the New Testament, Paul says, when trials come, or something like, since your trial has come, or, or when, um, when pain comes, those kinds of things. Paul um, is very clear in his letters that um, we should understand pain, trial, adversity as something that is part of our Christian journey. In fact, if, we're, if we don't ever experience it, if we, if we never experience difficulty, never experience pain, trial, then there's some question about at what level are we really experiencing um, uh, really a robust and true faith. Uh, I know that sounds backwards, um, but I think Bridges does a good job of trying to get us to that point. So if you turn in your um, books, Discipline of Grace, to um, page 222, at the top of... Uh, the page, the, the second paragraph, uh, Bridges writes this, one discipline is still absolutely necessary in the process of sanctification. The discipline of adversity or hardship. Adversity is not a discipline we undertake ourselves, but it is imposed on us by God as a means of our spiritual growth. As Hebrew, Hebrews 12, 2 says, I'm sorry, as Hebrews 12, 10 says, God disciplines us for our good, that we may share in his holiness. The purpose of the discipline of adversity, then, is to make us more holy. At the bottom of page 222, Bridges recalls Hebrews 12, 5 through 6, that says, My son... Do not make light of the Lord's discipline. Do not lose heart when he rebukes you because the Lord disciplines those he loves and he punishes everyone he accepts as a son. As I read that and, and even before we launched into this um, chapter, this question came to my mind. Um, does God... Scripture tells us that God disciplines those whom he loves and he punishes those who he accepts as a son. So if God 
doesn't love someone, if God doesn't accept them as a son, does that mean that they face no adversity ever? Does that mean he never disciplines them? And the problem with that question, though it's a totally fair and valid question, is that it's actually a completely invalid question. The reason for that is this. When we ask a question like, does God not discipline those whom he does not love, it violates one primary construct of who God is, that he is loving. Above all things, he is loving. He is always loving. And so to suggest that there is someone in the world who exists whom he does not love, perhaps other than Satan himself, is a, it is a fallacy. It's a logical fallacy. There is no one ever who has been created, and we know that God has created all things, so there's no one whom God has created that he does not love. And therefore... When adversity comes, it's coming as some sort of a learning moment from God. Now, people who don't believe in God, people who want to refuse this idea, then they would argue that, you know, no, God, you know, God isn't sending this as a punishment. God isn't sending this to teach me something. These are just coincidental things that happen in life. They're uh, natural moments of our being as humans. Well, let me share maybe an example with you. Um, maybe you've heard people say this before, but um, amongst my group of closest friends, we very often say, listen, you know, if we didn't tease you, you would think we didn't like you. In other words, we tease you because we like you. We don't tease people that we don't like. And I think by... An, by and large, that's, that's true. We probably don't tease people we don't like because, frankly, we're afraid we're going to offend them or, um, you know, some other kind of thing. They might retaliate against us. But those who are our closest friends, those we love, uh, those who we cherish and who we have a great relationship with, we do, we do share this sort of banter back and forth. So if I didn't tease you, you'd think I didn't like you. So does God say to us then, if I didn't discipline you, if I didn't allow adversity to come your way in order that you might learn something, if, if I didn't um, sometimes even bring you to trials in order that you might grow as a result of it, you might think I wouldn't love you or I didn't love you. And, and so on page 223, middle of the page, uh, Bridges writes this, it would have been an accepted fact to the first century readers of, he of Hebrews. And it should be for us today also that the discipline or the, the fact that God disciplines is not the mark of a harsh father, but rather a father who is deeply concerned for the welfare and maturity of his children. Consequently, we should realize that God's discipline, which comes to us in the form of adversity or hardship, is an indication of his loving care, not a token of his disfavor. And so this brings me to another question, though, but is all hardship, every single hardship we experience, is that God disciplining me? Is that God teaching me something? Well, yeah. And if disciplining me, it means teaching me something or helping me grow or something of that nature, rather than necessarily punishment, then it has to be true. God is always trying to teach me something, to help me learn something. And so these adversities that come, these trials that come, yeah, I mean, from time to time, it may be a punishment thing. You know, we may have done something that God is, again, trying to teach us not to do. And so he brings adversity our way in order to teach us that as a result of punishing us. But, but adversity doesn't have to be punishment. It may just be for growth. At the bottom of page 224, Bridges says, some Christians have difficulty with this truth and even deny it because they can't believe that a God of love is responsible for either the individual or public disasters that come to us. But the clear testimony of Scripture stands against all of our protestations. So we need to recognize the hand of God in all adversities we encounter and not make light of His discipline. We've encountered these difficult times for a reason. What is the reason? 
You know, going through the COVID-19 crisis has been an incredible trial, a great adversity. And I think we have to ask ourselves, why has God brought us to this place? Why are we here? Why has he allowed us to come to this place? What are we to learn? And man, I have to say, I think one of the biggest things we're learning in the midst of this time is what we can do without and what we cannot do without. I mean, there's so many things in my life that I'm not doing, I'm not participating in, I'm not being asked to do. And yet, life is going on. The church is still here. We're still functioning together as the body of Christ. In fact, in so many ways, we're functioning so much better than ever as the body of Christ in the midst of this time. And we're recognizing the things that are just simply not important. And what really truly is important are the things that draw us closer to God, closer to Christ, and closer to one another. So we've begun to eliminate a lot of things from our lives for, for the sake of health. But I have to say, there's a lot of those things I hope they stay eliminated from our lives because it was just busyness. It was taking me away and taking you away and taking us as a body away from God. And so we're in this moment of adversity, and I hope we're definitely learning something. Middle of, uh, I'm sorry, the, the last half of page 225 the fourth paragraph, Bridges says, Encouragement must come from the realization that the hardships we encounter come from a God who is not only sovereign in control of every circumstance of our lives, but who also loves us and who deals with us only on the basis of love. He is not only the sovereign ruler of his universe, but he is also our Heavenly Father, through the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I thought of it this way. Even in our anger, God deals with us in love. Even when God seems angry with us, or seems like maybe God has gotten angry with us, which, by the way, I don't think he does, but even if we seem to think that, he's doing this in love. God doesn't do anything that hasn't been born out of love. And so... That leads us to page 227, which says, all hardship is discipline. Every last little bit of it. The point of it is this. Um, we'll never really know which pieces of adversity are to punish us for something, which pieces of adversity are just so we'll learn something or, or so that we'll grow. Uh, why not just treat every adversity? Every single moment of difficulty, trial, strife, adversity, as if it were an opportunity to learn something more about the God who loves you so very much. I think that's what brings us back to the very start of this book and the title of this book, that the disciplines we must endure as we are growing in holiness in sanctification are all born out of grace, out of love. And so whether it's the discipline of prayer, or the discipline of waiting and watching, or the discipline of, of, uh, of speaking, or whatever the disciplines are of adversity, um, it's got to be grounded in God's grace for us. That he loves us. That he gave us his son to die for us. And that he wants to see us grow closer to him, closer in relationship with him. I'll leave you with this thought for today. One of my um, absolute favorite um, worship songs that has come out relatively recently um, is from the group Sovereign Grace. And um, it's a... a it's called Joy in My Morning. You've definitely heard um, the ladies of our praise team uh, sing this several times. I'll read a little bit of it for you. It says, When darkness falls and temptations call and all around me seems undone, you hear my pleas, supply my needs, and tell me of your wondrous love. For you are the joy in my morning. You are my song of praise. Just like the new day dawning, 
flooding my world with grace. Though trials come and every one can take me further from the truth, you calm my fears, dry all my tears, and draw me closer, Lord, to you. For you are the joy in my morning. You're my song of praise, just like the new day dawn, flooding my world with your grace. I hope you can see that today. I hope you can see that God is flooding your world with grace, with love. Yes, even in moments of adversity. And I hope you've really enjoyed walking through this, uh, this book, Discipline of Grace. Um, I look forward to meeting with you next week uh, as we're going to open up uh, our next book, which is Max Licato's book, Traveling Light. Um, if you don't have the book yet, you can certainly contact us at the church office and you can uh, drop by and pick one up or we can somehow get one to you. They're also available on Amazon.com. Um, but we would love to have you join us as we walk through Max Licato's book, Traveling Light, uh, starting next week. Have a great week, everybody. We'll see you very, very soon.